I, I chair com chair committees and sitting committees where there can be no other. I can sit in rooms where there can be no other women in the room. Um, I know we all have um, uh, subconscious biases that we don't expect to have. Um, I never knowingly have preferentially employed a woman or not a woman. I've had times where my research group has been all women and everybody said, oh, you've got women in your group. And it's had no women and everyone's gone, oh, you've got no women in your group. Actually, the people I've got in my research group at that point in time are the best people. They're the people who applied, who are best for the job, best suited to the job, best suited to the team. Um, and I would hope that every job I've ever got or every accolade or every step forward I'm making is because of my abilities and not because I'm a woman. I would, I would hope that that's the case. It is not unknown even now that people sometimes will, will phone you up and assume you're the secretary because you're a female and they want to speak to Dr. Fraser. Um, you, I have experienced sexual harassment in, in the workplace. Um, I don't really want to go into it, but it does happen. Um, I think actually it's more prevalent in some areas than others. Um, I think it doesn't discriminate between younger people and older people. Some people are just biased, although the much younger generation I see a lot of differences. And I think there are interesting challenges. I think um, well, when I was a PhD student in the whole of my department, there were only four. Fe there were no female academics, and there were only four female PhD students and no female postdocs. So already, in comparison to the to the to the boys, we were in a minority. When I was doing my degree, there were ten women on a course of hundred men. We were in the minority. You know, it's pretty. It's still pretty difficult if those were the statistics that there, there will be equal numbers of women at, at my stage of the career. There won't be. I, I will still be in a minority. But it is getting better and it is continuing to get better. And I think there's a lot more realisation now that it's not just about the needs of women, but it's the needs of people as they go through different career stages. And I think that's pretty important. Definitely don't... Um, be told that you can't do it just because you're a woman. Absolutely rubbish. Lots of women are very smart and very capable and um, so are lots of young men. Go for it. Do what you enjoy and follow your, your passion and your love. Um, and the other thing I would say is, is it's pretty damn difficult to have it all. It's hard for the guys to have it all and it's hard for the girls to have it all. But naturally we have to have the babies so it is a little bit more challenging and don't put that off for the sake of your career. Lots of um, people in the generation prior to mine, if you look at them as, as, as scientists, maybe it was a conscious choice, but a lot of female scientists that are more senior don't necessarily have families. A lot of my generation have families. We have very young families, but we have families. And I think that that's starting to change a lot of the conceptions and ideas about what academia should be and how it should work and what hours you can do and everything else. So just don't be frightened, go for it and, and be, the, be the trailblazer.